I'm now joined by Dr. Thierry Fumo. He's a president of the Swiss Society for Intensive Care Medicine. And uh, Dr. Fimo, you have been tested uh, positive for coronavirus. That's why you're joining us from your quarantine. How are you doing? Thank you. Hello. I I'm doing fine. In fact, I'm at home. I'm in quarantine, uh, but uh, I feel well uh, because maybe you know that uh, many people who are infected, they don't have any severe symptoms. And luckily, until now, I'm, I don't have any severe symptoms and uh, I feel well. So you're just keeping uh, isolated. That's good. Glad that you're able to join us. According to your latest press release, uh, Switzerland has about 850 beds with um, ventilators. And at the moment, we have over 8,000 COVID-19 cases in Switzerland and more counting. So I wonder, not everyone needs a ventilator, as we can see. Nevertheless, are there enough? We are scaling up. I mean, many of the hospitals are trying to scale up their uh, capacities in uh, ICU beds and ventilators. There's been a, a great effort around the, the country, and we have now more places than this, this number, probably over 1,000. And uh, as you know, as you mentioned, uh, only a, a little part of the patient need a ventilator. This is around five to ten percent. So uh, at the moment we, we have enough uh, ICU ventilated beds, but we don't know exactly how the things are going to evolve in the, in the next days. But we are getting prepared to, to face it. Recently you also uh, released some guidelines together with the Swiss Academy for Medical Sciences uh, on how to proceed when there's not enough or there should be a shortage of these ICU beds. Uh, if so, how medical personnel shall be advised or how they should uh, prioritize? Um, what's your advice to them? Yeah, we try to be prepared to this because uh, we hope it will not come. But if we have a, a surge of, uh, of patients and that our ICU capacity is overwhelmed, we want to be ready and we want our physicians and teams uh, in the ICUs around the country to have a, a kind of toolbox just to be ready to make this decision uh, uh, in triage. Uh, we, we, we have been working with the, the Swiss uh, Academy for Science and all the ethical parts have been worked by the, the experts in the field and we've been adding the, the, the criteria for the, the medical uh, reasons to admit or not to admit a patient. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we, we try to, to give some counsel, uh, some, some advice sorry, to, the, to, the, to the physician and to the teams to, to make this difficult choice if they were to be confronted in the next days. Let's say if there is a complete overload of capacities for intensive care units and ventilators and patients have to be refused, what's the criteria? First of all, uh, that we have to take into consideration the, 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 the advanced plan of the patient. That is very important. If someone has decided not to go to an ICU, this is very important to take this into account. Second, all the ethics principles that were already published years ago by the Swiss Academy of Science are still uh, the basis for the decision. Mm -hmm. Third, we have to decide on the prognosis of the patient. We have to choose the patients who have the best prognosis and will uh, get the, bet, the, the best out of the ICU stay. And this is a difficult choice and it's not always uh, only based on the, the comorbidities or the frailty index or the other uh, problems that the patient may have. Uh, it's, a, it's a difficult task for the, for the physician and that's why we publish these guidelines. And, uh, uh, I hope that the, 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 uh, my colleagues who will be confronted in the next uh, uh, days or week, they, they will be able to use these guidelines. So it's not about first come, first serve, right? We try to avoid this kind of uh, uh, criteria and also to avoid uh, age as, a, as the only criteria or social or economic conditions. So mm -hmm. we want to, to take into account the, 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 the interest of the patient. We want to save as, as many lives as possible. So it's the, the, the patient who will 
get the best out of their ICU stay that will be admitted and that will be uh, uh, taken in charge in the ICU for many days. Um, what if someone has to be refused uh, a treatment? What else do you offer then? What kind of treatment? Of course, palliative care is very important and we will offer palliative care. This is something that we regularly do uh, in the ICU. Uh, people don't realize that, but many people, in fact, are regularly dying in the ICU and our teams in the ICU are trained to, to do palliative care and to, to give uh, the medication that is needed so that the dying process of the patient is uh, not too terrible for him and for his uh, relatives. So we will not abandon patient. We will simply choose between mechanical ventilation and palliative care. Okay. Do you think we can avoid the worst case scenario if we now really apply to the measures that have been taken, to the go uh, taken by the government? Can we flatten this curve out? I wish I knew. Um, I think that we, we all have to trust the government and uh, to think that the decisions that were taken uh, have now to be uh, applied. And uh, I think that everyone has to be disciplined just to, to do what the government said. It's no time for discussing, arguing. I think uh, we will have the occasion to discuss that in a, in, a, in a few weeks or months' time and to see if these decisions were good or not. At the, at the present time, it's not, it's not the, the right time for that. I hope that all that has been taken uh, as a decision will have an effect and will flatten this, uh, this curve. This is very important for our health system because if we can flatten the curve, if we can decrease uh, the, 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 the uh, amount of uh, the surge of patients uh, who will come in the next days or week, this is a... Uh, 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 something very important for, for our ICUs and for our hospitals and the general health system. And on that note, is there any advice you would like to give to our viewers? Yeah, I would say uh, uh, you just have to listen to what the government decided and uh, be disciplined, protect yourself, prote protect your relatives, uh, support them. And uh, I think that all together, collective, we, collectively, we can... We can uh, go through this crisis uh, with, uh, I hope, uh, uh, a, a very small number of uh, dead people and uh, uh, very uh, few psychological consequences for all of us. Thank you very much. And, and just quickly, what about you? When do you think can you get off quarantine? Uh, it's 10 days and uh, at least two days without symptoms. and. Uh, just now, I don't have a lot of symptoms and uh, I will be uh, okay for going back home, uh, not home, going back to work, sorry, uh, on Friday, Friday morning. Okay, great. Then uh, good luck with that and thank you so much for joining us.